Hey girls and guys, it's Presley, and today in this video, I'm going to be talking about that I changed my very first poopy diaper. Now, for those of you that are new to my channel, I made a video several months back talking about how I got a new job and that I work at this, uh, that I work as a caretaker for children who have disabilities such as autism, Down syndrome, behavioral issues, so on and so forth. And I've talked about how different like classes they're in, like in different, ver we have various age groups from three and above. So we got pre-K ages three to four, kinder ages five to six, bigs ages seven through 18 or 17, and expanded, which is basically expanded means one-on-one -on -one time. That's what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. The um, expanded kids, these, these kids are nonverbal autistic, and they're all basically wearing pull-ups and non-potty trained. So, changing my very first poopy diaper, I tried to mentally prepare myself for this, because one of my coworkers told me that eventually I was going to have to change a poopy diaper. So, again... Had to mentally prepare myself because I've never in my life changed a poopy diaper. And I never thought that I was going to have to at some point. And I know this whole stepping out of your comfort zone type bullshit, but we have boundaries too. You got to respect them as well. But I get it. My coworker wants me to be more involved in situations like this, but... There's just some people, not everybody has to change a kid. I mean, if you like changing kids, good for you. And if you don't like to change kids, good for you. It's just me. I'm a cool with kids. As um, I'm okay with watching your kid. But when it comes to changing your kid and if, they're, and if they have some sort of disability, I'm like, eh. If they're over the age of three or four and they can't potty train themselves, it's... It's going to be more difficult. So when I went in, at least I had some assistance whenever I had to change this child. And this child was at least six years old, nonverbal autistic. So me and my coworker, my coworker, she went in, she helped me go through all the um, steps and necessities on how to change a kid. And um, what I experienced was... Um, was very interesting and very new, I must say. And honestly, I really wish I wouldn't want to experience it a second time. But then again, I'm going to continue on with this. What, so I, I went in there. He wore boxers. He wore like underwear. That's because he was wearing underwear at school. Honestly, he should have been wearing a pull-up. Because, you know, pull-ups are more for like older kids who aren't potty trained, but this kid was wearing full-fledged underwear, and they probably look brand new, too, and they got soiled. And good Lord, this kid soiled so much. And I questioned myself, like, bro, what did you eat? Like, what the fuck have they been feeding you at school? But then again, I... I I went through the procedure. I put on gloves just to be safe. You can never be safe because I'm also autistic. And when it comes to people like me, other people like me, I'm very sensitive to what touches my hands. Leftover residue from dishes in the sink or poopy diapers. Anything fecal matter in my hands that could give you pink eye or possibly other infections, and it touches your face with the, the grossness, the bacteria, the smell. I had to put on gloves. You can never be too safe. And my coworker said, it'll, it'll get more, you'll get more used to it to the point where you don't have to wear gloves. And I'm thinking, ma'am, I'm going to have to wear gloves all the time if I'm going to have to change these diapers. But then again, I digress. Anyway, he had to get, had to, get to the point where he, we had to take all of his clothes off to change him because we had we had we have extra pairs of clothes to change kids when we have, whenever they have accidents. And then after that, after I was done with the whole thing that my coworker taught me, I went I stepped out of the bathroom and my other coworker came in and congratulated me saying, "Hey, you handled it like a champ. I thought you were going to be freaking out." To be honest, I was. And here I mean, the outside of it, 
I'm not screaming out loud, but internally I am. I was freaking out. This was a new experience for me, stepping out of my comfort zone, but honestly, we got boundaries too. But then again, changing kids is a new experience. And also my intrusive thoughts were going through my head also. And intrusive thoughts is like the angel and devil on your shoulder. But mostly the intrusive thoughts could be like a devil on your shoulder. And I was going through this like crazy, like these nonverbal autistic kids, their brains function a bit more, I wouldn't say slow because I don't know if that would be more, I don't know if that word is offensive. So I'd say that their brains are a bit more delayed. So when it comes to them being older than, older from the age of three or four, older than age of three or four, and that they're not potty trained yet, that can be a bit of a challenge because could you imagine being a caretaker, taking care of a kid that is over the age of the, um, of when they're supposed to be potty trained, but they're not potty trained because their brains are delayed? My intrusive thoughts were making me want to grab the kid, sit them on the toilet, and hoping that they can just learn it for themselves and get the gist of it because it's been four years since COVID hit and my coworker told me that before COVID hit that they were potty trained but ever since COVID hit they all went back to square one and we all and they had to train them all over again and it's been four years since then you think they would at least grasp the concept of being of like hey Maybe I should just sit down on the toilet and instead of having someone change me because it feels weird whenever they wipe me and blah, blah, blah and having to change clothes. That's what I was thinking throughout the entirety of my brain. Like, I'm mentally traumatized from what I saw. And you may call me dramatic or whatever. I don't give a shit on what you call me. But... To me, how I feel, I felt like I saw I saw things that I shouldn't be seeing. I know children can be naked because they're kids. But honestly, I don't want to see them like that. Because I have my own images that I just don't want to be stuck in my brain for the rest of my life. And sure, I can try to at least get it out of my head. But another thing you guys don't know about me is when I see something that slightly traumatizes me or more the, over, over the top traumatizes me, it takes a long time for that mental image to step to seep out of my head. And it's like a slow process, like a fax machine. That, that, you know that sound? It's basically like that with my head. Because everybody's brains function differently. And what I saw... I don't know if I want to experience that again because I'm not okay. I am not okay. I am not fine. Go ahead. Say that I'm dramatic. You stepped out of your comfort zone. That's good. You should try it again. I'm just hoping that I don't have to try it again. And if I do, I just want to at least have somebody watching me because I don't want to fuck up. Okay? Kids are adorable. But if I do one wrong thing and if something slips up or touches me, I don't want that. I don't want that on my conscience. Everybody's got their own thing going on. I got my own thing going on. Everybody, It's just a mess. It's just a little rant that I just wanted to mention. But at least I stepped out of my comfort zone and that's all that matters. Whatever. It is what it is. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, share, subscribe. All that jazz. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.